Hi, I'm Yaman Umurolo from Xilinx Research Labs, and today I'm going to show you how to train and deploy a neural network with FIN, targeting line rate inference for network intrusion detection. In this demo, the application we're considering is line rate traffic classification as part of a network intrusion detection system, where the aim is to detect packets with malicious intent, such as those sent by hackers, viruses, or malware. This type of traffic classification is traditionally implemented by hand-coded rules, but machine-learned classifiers such as neural networks are emerging as a popular alternative. Other important considerations here are high throughput and low latency. To avoid introducing bottlenecks on the network, the traffic classifier implementation should be capable of processing packets at line rate, which can be up to hundreds of millions of packets per second. The classifier's latency also plays a key role in how much buffering is needed. Assuming that packets will be buffered until the classifier emits a response, every millisecond of traffic translates into tens of megabytes of buffers. The goal of this demo is to show how we can implement a neural network-based traffic classifier on an FPGA to fulfill these requirements. To train a neural network with supervised learning on this task, we need a dataset. We use the UNSW NB15 dataset from the Cyber Range Lab of the Australian Centre for Cybersecurity for this purpose, which contains a mix of normal activities and synthetic contemporary attack behaviours, such as denial of service, worms, backdoors and exploits. The original dataset contains 47 extracted features from each record, with a variety of information such as the protocol used, port numbers and arrival time between packets and a label that indicates whether this record is from normal network activity or an attack. These features have a variety of data types ranging from strings to categorical values, which must be converted to numbers before feeding to a neural network. In this demo, we're using the binarized variant of this dataset following the approach from Murovic et al., which results in 600 bits of input for each record. More information about the dataset and the binarization procedure can be found in the references at the bottom of the slide. In order to implement our traffic classifier, we'll be using FIN. FIN is an experimental framework from Xilinx Research Labs to explore deep neural network inference on FPGAs. It combines quantized neural networks with few-bit arithmetic and data flow style architectures customized for each network to generate high throughput, low latency FPGA accelerators that perform inference in a streaming fashion. The framework is fully open source in order to enable a high degree of flexibility and can be found on the URL on the center left. FIN provides an end-to-end -end tool flow to train and deploy neural networks, and we'll go through the key steps of the flow in this demo. This will involve first training a quantized neural network in PyTorch using Brevitas, then converting the quantized neural network to Vivaldo IP using the FIN compiler, and finally, integrating the generated IP into a larger design to obtain a bitstream. This video will demonstrate the first two steps in a Jupyter notebook running in the FIN Docker environment, while the last step will be covered in the next video in the series. Let us proceed with the first step, which is to train a quantized network with Brevitas, our PyTorch library for quantization-aware training. In this demo, we'll be using a multi-layer perceptron with three hidden layers and two-bit quantized weights and activations to reduce the compute cost. Our topology will look like this. We'll feed the input vector with 600 binary elements into a fully connected layer of 64 neurons with two-bit quantized weights and using a two-bit ReLU activation function. Then we'll repeat the same structure twice to obtain a total of three fully connected hidden layers. And finally, we'll use a single neuron whose output is quantized to a binary value to obtain the output. We'll also use standard PyTorch batch norm and dropout layers before the activations to help the network converge faster and overfit less, though these aren't shown in the figure here for brevity. Let's now switch to the Jupyter Notebook to show how this works in code. The first step will be to define our quantized MLP in Brevitas. The quantized CypSec MLP class here, which inherits from a PyTorch NN module, contains our model definition. Note that the quantized fully connected layers are expressed by quantlinear from the Brevitas library with an extra parameter specifying the bit width of the weights. And similarly, using quantrelu for two-bit quantized ReLU activations. 
The Brevitas layers are all in idiomatic PyTorch, which allows us to mix them with regular PyTorch NN layers like BatchNor and Dropout. Now that we have our model definition, we could train it from scratch with PyTorch, but in this demo, we'll be using pre-trained weights to speed up the process. We'll first instantiate our Brevitas model like any other PyTorch model and use the load state dict function to, tr to load the pre-trained weights from the checkpoint on disk. Let's also load up the dataset to see how accurate the network is with these pre-trained weights. We have the binarized version of the UNSW and B15 test set saved as NumPy arrays, which we can put into a PyTorch data loader like this, in this case, using a batch size of 1000. By defining a helper function that compares the output of the network for each batch of data to the output that is produced by Revitas, we can measure the accuracy. Finally, by invoking this helper function on our model with pre-trained weights and the data loader that we instantiated, we see that we get close to 92% accuracy on the test set. To take our trained quantized NN into FIN, we'll be exporting it into Onyx, which is an open format to represent machine learning models. Note that the generated Onyx will have some additions on top of the Onyx standard, such as extra quantization annotations. To do the export, we simply call the export fin onyx function on top of our Brevitas model, specifying the input shape to be used. To ensure that the fin compiler knows that this model was trained on binarized inputs, we can load our model into a fin model wrapper and then mark the input data type explicitly as bipolar, which indicates binarization with minus one and plus one values. We can now view the exported Onyx model using Netron, an open source visualizer for neural networks. In this interactive display, we can see that the exported Onyx contains a number of layers. In particular, we can see that our fully connected layers have been exported as MATMOL operators. By clicking on this MATMOL node over here, we can view more about its properties, such as the values of the weight tensor for this layer. Here, we can see that the weight tensor, which is a 600 by 64 matrix in this case, carries a special quantization annotation that marks it as containing two bit integers. Scrolling through the values, we can see that the only values in this matrix are minus ones, zeros, and plus ones, which are permitted by a narrow range two bit integer data type. Now that we have a trained quantized neural network, the next step is to use the FIN compiler to generate tailored FPGA hardware for it. The FIN compiler is able to generate streaming data flow hardware designs from trained QNNs tailored to the user's performance requirements. In this step, we're going to supply the compiler with our trained neural network exported as Onyx and the performance target to generate custom hardware for it. This custom hardware will be a pipeline of streaming components where each layer will be allocated its own compute and memory resources, exported as an IP design that can be integrated into a larger system using Vivado IP integrator or as a Vitus kernel. Let's take a moment now to examine how the performance target will be specified. One of the differentiators in streaming data flow architectures on FPGAs is the ability to scale to meet performance and resource requirements. The scaling is controlled by two key parameters, the clock frequency and what we call the folding factor, which controls the degree of parallelism and time multiplexing inside each layer. Clock frequency is proportional to performance, while the folding factor is inversely proportional. Let's make this concrete with an example. A design with a 300 MHz clock and a folding factor of 10 can classify a packet every 10 clock cycles, yielding a performance of 30 million requests per second. This will come at a certain FPGA resource cost, here illustrated with the red and the blue boxes. If our system has a tight resource budget, we can scale the system down by increasing the folding factor, let's say to 1000, resulting in a slower design at 300,000 requests per second, but also with a much smaller resource footprint. Conversely, if we're not resource bound and want maximum throughput, we can turn the folding factor all the way down to one, which will yield a design that uses more resources, but can now classify packets at clock frequency, 300 million requests per second. This is the option that we'll be going for in this demo, since we want to do line rate classification. With that, 
Let's switch back to the Jupyter Notebook to show how this works in practice. In order to generate a streaming data flow accelerator from our quantized NM, we need to specify a bit of configuration for FIN, which is done in this cell. The two configuration options at the top specify the target inferences per second and the clock frequency, which are critical to the performance scaling as we just discussed. We also specify the target Xilinx FPGA part, which is the part number for ZSU-104 in this demo. And the rest of the config options relate to setting the output directory, embedding parameters as constants in the midstream, and other fine-tuning options. The FIM compiler can produce a variety of outputs. And here, we're selecting the stitched IP, which is all the layers in the network stitched together and exported as a VLAT IP block, and RTLs and performance, which will generate a performance report by simulating the generated hardware, in this case, with a batch of 1,000 inputs. We can now call the build data flow function from our, with our exported Onyx model and the build configuration. The tool will now go through the various steps of compilation, invoking Vitus HLS and other tools under the hood, and declare that it's completed after some time. Depending on the size of the network and the degree of parallelization, this can take several hours. Once the build is completed, we can take a look at the generated output products. Under the stitched IP folder, we'll find a Vivaldo project that contains the generated accelerator for our network as IP blocks. Here's what that looks like in the Vivaldo IP integrator tool. As you can see, Finn has created a pipeline of layers with what IP block per layer. Each of these layers has its own dedicated hardware and communicates with the other layers via Axie streams. Similarly, the initial input and the final output are also Axie streams, which makes it easier to integrate fin generated accelerators into larger streaming systems. Going back to examining the generated output products in the notebook, we can also see that an RTL sim performance report has also been generated. This report contains various performance oriented metrics obtained by running a number of inputs through the accelerator in Verilog simulation. We can see that our 1000 inputs finish processing in 1025 cycles, which includes a pipeline latency of 26 cycles. This yields a throughput of one classification per cycle and running at 300 megahertz that will translate into approximately 300 million classifications per second. However, we should note that this performance is only possible if the accelerator is not bottlenecked by the memory bandwidth. For providing the inputs, this requires over 20 gigabytes per second. The final step in this notebook will be to verify whether the generated accelerator achieves the same accuracy as the original network. To do this, we'll leverage the FIN compiler's verification capabilities, loading one of the models generated at an intermediate compilation step and using the RTL sim execution mode. Again, we'll define a helper function similar to the one that we made for the original Brevitas model to measure the accuracy. Note that the call to the Brevitas model is now gone and is now replaced by the execute onyx function provided by Finn, which will take into account the RTL sim execution mode that we set up earlier. Executing our helper function on the test dataset, we observe that we obtain the exact same accuracy as the original Brevitas model, which concludes the verification. That concludes this video on the generation of a line rate intrusion detection MLP accelerator with Finn. The next video in the series will demonstrate how the generated hardware IP can be integrated into a system and show this running on a ZCU-104 board. You can learn more about Finn by visiting the landing page at this URL at the center of the page. Thank you for watching.